So obviously sighting it, left and right is some wood underneath the wheels, for left to right, front to back is all done on the jockey wheel. Okay. So what you can find is if you're, having to, if you're on a slope and you're having to raise the, the nose up and you wang the jockey wheel as far as it will go, you can't go anymore, what you can do is wind your front legs down, then support it on the front, wind your jockey wheel down, readjust the height of your jockey wheel on the yeah, side yeah, there, yeah. and then obviously start again. But as I say, your four legs are just designed for stability, not for, not for lifting or raising. Okay? Yep. Right, so front end. Uh, this is your stabiliser, your Alco stabiliser hitch. You move this cable out of the So this is what adds stability to your caravan. So if you look when it closes down, you see them close in together. That's what's gripping onto your tow ball. So your tow ball needs to be grease free and dirt free before you start. So if you do tow any other trailers, or farmers trailers or anything like that, that need to be greased, you need to keep something in the car just to clean your, your ball yeah, off okay. before, before you All hitch right. it. Okay, underneath it's obviously your main hitch. Uh, I'll show you more of this when we hook it onto the car afterwards. Right. Um, 13 pin, which is obviously your lights and your power off a vehicle. Handbrake, which is as easy as, oh, dropping your cable. Handbrake, handbrake off, handbrake on. Okay. As easy as that. It will, if you're on a slight incline or slope, it will automatically pull itself on further for the more pressure that the brake needs to be on. So don't be alarmed if your brake levers all the way back here. It's just because you're on a slope and it needs to be okay. a bit more. And then obviously jockey wheel winds up and down, and then obviously you can adjust the height off there. But again, I'll talk more about that when we hop it onto the car afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay, so gas cupboard in the front. Got This is your gas bottle already in fitted and your pigtail already in fitted for you. Obviously the gas on and off is just as easy as close the bottle and open the bottle. Yep. Okay, there is a shot off valve here. Uh, it's more designed for the gas technicians when they're doing their safety checks and things. If you want to switch your gas on and off, just use the bottle to turn it on and off. Okay, mm -hmm. and then obviously we've got your leg winder and a wheel brace in the front there for you as well. Right up. Okay. So that's about it for the front end. Happy? Yeah. Yeah, perfect. So, we'll start on the side now. So, if we move your acker all out of the way, you've got your first leg on the front here, and then obviously it's duplicated on the other side as well for you. So, that's your two front legs. Water in that pipe, which is easy as hold the ticker down, and it'll pop out. Okay, and then it's just as simple as click it back in. And that goes down. A lovely pipe on yours so it doesn't float. Come on. And there's your filter on the bottom. Okay, so you just simply drop that into the bottom of your bottle. And that's your water in there for your water system. Do I have to have, buy a new filter for the bottom of there? Is that something? No, not really. It's mainly there just in case any bugs or anything sort of crawl in there so it doesn't suck it up into your water system inside. So. Okay. Uh, obviously, Acarol, this is my Acarol, but you've obviously got an Acarol in your starter kit, so you've got one there ready for you to get. Get started. And we got this as well, have we? Or yeah, we that's your pipe. Yeah, that's your pipe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about if we pull up to one of them sites that's got water? You can if you look in our shop. You can buy. There's various different fittings and things you can do. You can get one where it works with the Acarol, where it's a pipe that goes in the Acarol with like a, you know, like a boy. So like a when, ball it, when it, yeah, ball cock. That's what I was looking for. When it drains, it'll automatically fill your Acarol up. You can get other ones where it's simply a pipe system which sort of links into this and then goes direct in. But again, if you speak to them in our shop, they're the font of all knowledge in there, so they'll tell you what you can and can't. Okay, that's can't good. Okay, right, so here, this is the um, flue for your water boiler. So your water boiler will either run on gas or electric, or gas and electric. On electric, you don't have to take the cover off, but if you're running on gas, you do. So to take the cover, just sits on, put it on the top first, and then just clip it in the bottom. Okay, to take it off, you just put some weight down on the top, and then... Pull it out from the bottom. Do you want to have a go, Tunt? I'm not going to that. I'm doing that. Okay. Yeah. Just they are quite they're reasonably robust, but if you're a bit too brutal with them, you will snap them quite easy. Uh, the main thing is if you ever want to use it on gas, remember you need to remove the cover. Okay? Mm -hmm. Lovely. So next day, we've got your 12 volt battery, which is your leisure battery we've fitted in already for you. And then your 240 hookup. And if you look in the back here as well, there's a, an external satellite in there as well. So what you find on some of the sites now, they have external satellite on the post. So all you need to get is the cable to run from there to the post outside. Because a lot of the sites, you know what it's like now with free So it makes it like cable then? You don't need a thing? Yeah, yeah, it makes it cable. It can be free sat. Different sites work different things. Okay. So, But you don't need your own satellite if you've got that? No, no, if you've got that plug in. It depends what the site's got. Right. Sometimes you need the free sat boxes, other ones you can just plug in. And they use that to pick up the preview signal. Right after you get with me. 
Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So obviously the 12 volt battery, what it is, that runs virtually all your system inside, apart from obviously your 240 sockets and other bits and bobs in your van. The 12 volt battery is recharged by the 240 supply. So even though most of your power comes out your battery, you need your 240 plugged in so it's continually charging this. Because if you run without that plugged in, you'll soon flatten that battery. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, perfect. So, the fridge legs and the next one down. I've got it running on gas at the minute, so a lot of heat will come out of this side if you've got it on gas. Uh, obviously, the heat does come out of it. Same as the fridge at home, you don't notice because you don't go around the back of your fridge at home, so that's all they are there. Keep coming down. Two waste outlets, your two grey ones there. So excuse me. We've obviously got your grey pipe there and your waste master. So you just put the, push the two grey pipes in and then your waste master sits there. Your Acarol's 40 litres and your waste master's about 40 litres. Oh, so lovely. Normally yeah. you'll find when that one's empty, that one's full. full. So yeah. you'll always see people trundle into the tap with an Acarol and their waste master. One to empty and one to fill back up. Yep. Okay. Right, toilet. So, toilet is just press the two buttons and the compartment opens. So, your toilet cassette is all in the bottom and it's just lifted up and it just slides out. Oh, got a bit longer. Okay, and it is on wheels as well. Okay. Obviously, when it comes to emptying it, it's just do that. unscrew that, take it to wherever you need to empty it, pick it up, press the button and tip it all in. Okay, when you're emptying it, don't put the cap on the wall next to where you're leaning in the uh, hole to empty in it, because if you knock that with your arm into the pit, I certainly wouldn't want to be the one no. going in to retrieve your back out. Okay, so in the top you've got a separate flush tank, so rather than when you flush your toilet, it uses that water, it's got its own flush tank, and that's just situated there. It's about a three, four litre tank, so all you literally need to do is pink liquid, well there you go, it's already full, so pink liquid and some water in here and then all that does is when you press, press the flush button in the toilet it flushes out of a separate tank rather than using, rather than your, best yeah, water. Rather than using your best water. So there is a lovely little pump here that you pop off to drain it. So obviously if I tip that all the way down here now you'll see it will start draining it out. So that's in the winter time when you need yeah. to drain all the fluids out, that's your access point for draining off your uh, Draining off the flush tank. And how many flushes will that do before I need to do it again? Depends how long you hold the flush button down for, as daft as it sounds. Yeah, okay. But it's, it's down to user preference, really. Some people will flush it for ages, and other people it'll just be a quick flush. So it's all down to user. Uh, it depends what you've done. Really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're putting it in a nice room, yeah. A lot of people tend to just number one in here, and then number two in the toilets on site. Yes, that's but, what I try and tell all our family. Yeah, yeah. But you know what it's like, you'll have kids or something with you and they can't play. And they'll have a nice go in there. But as I say, as long as you've got the blue liquid in the bottom, it will start breaking down any of the nasty bits and bobs. So when yeah. you go to the thing, you can just literally tip it in. Yeah. And hold it back. That's good. Okay. Mm -hmm. So your next one down is a whopping cupboard. And that just leads into where your bunk beds are. But I'll show you the rest of the hatch from the inside. So you'll see that from... See that from the inside. So, round the back. So, obviously, your two rear legs are on the back end, underneath the bottom there. So, you can see them two there. And the bolts, the nuts on the end to do them are just situated underneath there. Yep. We do use a drill with an attachment line to wind them up and down. Yeah, you haven't got the leg winder, but it's up to you. If you tended to moving around, I would recommend the drill because it takes you seconds to wind them down rather than minutes. Perfect. So, you do you want to interrupt? I don't know what to make. I'm going to carry on. Do you want to talk awnings? I know you, you get two sizes on. Two sizes? You, you will get the three metre, huh? You can pause it if you want. You'll get the three oh. metre. Oh, we're going to film in there. Oh! Sorry, that's my air compressor. I'll show you where the three metre is. Bacon, no, no, no. So, the door catch is just your little lever here, pull it and it will release it off the door. So, just watch it. If you haven't only got any youngsters or anyone that you that comes to your caravan, do show them that because what you'll find is they'll just drag it and rip it off the wall. So, it's just as easy as pull it and that'll release it. And then also, you've got your barn style door. 
Okay? Okay. Right. Wheels and tyres. <laughs> there should be a lovely little thing on there that says what your tyre pressure should be and what your wheel nut should be. Obviously she's been washed very lovingly and they've managed to wash it off. Yeah. As Stuart said, he'll have a word with Sally and get us print off the sheet, so we will have a sheet yeah. down there. It'll take a wild guess, but it is a wild guess. It's about probably 62 PSI for the tyres and 110 newton metres for the wheel nuts. To say that is a guess, I will correct it when I get back down there. So gospel, I know it's on video, don't take that as gospel, I will give you the correct information afterwards. For the wheel nuts, they've been done in the PDI. I'll do them again today for you. But then from today onwards, it's down to yourselves to check your uh, tyres and wheel nuts before every journey. Obviously, the main thing is if someone's been fiddling with your wheels and you don't know, you take off down the road, that comes off. This is it in the floor, the starters, and then especially it's your safety as well in the vehicle as well. So obviously, something that takes 30 seconds to do, just check your wheel nuts are tight before you, uh, before you set up and your tyres are in good condition. Okay. okay. Right, we'll keep coming down, so I've already shown you the external 240 socket, mm -hmm. which obviously is only live when you've got your 240 your mains power plugged in. And then your last one is your external barbecue. Okay. Okay, so that one. And you'll need one of those white what leads that's called a, uh, what's it called? This lead here. Gas pipe. Pigtail. No, Pigtail. all you need now, because the, the gas is regulated in there. So all you need is the bayonet fitting, which pushes up inside there. So you can get one of them from the shop. And then all you do is, you rub a hose off your barbecue, you put the bayonet fitting on the end, paper tie it in or crimp it on the end, and then all you simply do is push it up into there and then switch that on. And it's as easy as that. And then obviously it's your controls that you've got on your barbecue. Okay, that's cool. Okay. So obviously the main thing is, with the gas barbecue point, fantastic. Don't ever cook inside your uh, awning. There's carbon monoxide in a confined space and in your caravan. You'll probably sleep well, but we probably won't see you again. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> nice somber way of putting it there, but as long as it gets the message through. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Happy with everything on the outside? Mm -hmm. Fantastic. We'll jump inside then. After you. Yeah. Well, I'm in first time. After you, we do. No, no, after you, it's your purchase. What, you're not allowed to talk because we're filming? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let me put my lovely slippers on. Right, now, the only seat I need to get under is the one you sat on. I'll just need to get under that side. Oh, I'll come this way then. Right, perfect. So, lift this one up. So, in the corner over there is your water boiler. So that's your water boiling system. Oh, yeah, water. yeah, yeah. You see the blue pipe that comes off it with the little yellow tap that's sitting flat? Yep. That's your drainage system to drain off the water. In the bad weather. Yeah, so when it comes to winter, or it's getting to all October time, you know when it starts freezing, all you simply do is lift that yellow lever up so it sits up straight, and that will automatically drain that tank out. And then all you need to do is come to your taps, Open your taps up and just get the last residual water yeah, out. Just let it run. Yeah, yeah, and that's it. Once or there's no water coming through your taps, just leave that tap up. Your system's drained off and you're set ready for winter then. Okay. okay. So when it comes to the summer and you obviously want to fill your water system back up, all you do is just simply flip it back down and that's it closed and you're ready to go then. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here is your consumer unit. Alright. So this is your power, if you can see it there. So there's three switches along here. Space heater, which is obviously for your fire. Water Jeez. heater, yeah. which is for your water heater there. Now, the one and only thing you can do terminal damage to is switching that on without having any water in there. It's like boiling your kettle with no, uh, no water in it. Okay. So what I get into a habit of is even when you leave, is just switch them, them two switches off. So that switches off your, your, your heater and also your water boiler and then you can't do any damage to it. And then only switch them back on when you've got your water system primed and you're ready to go. So that's one and only thing. I'll switch them on now because I've got your system primed and that everything. Okay. But when I'm talking through the water, you'll know the point I'll tell you that's when you can switch it back on. So I'll switch them to one. The green one is just your battery charger. Just leave that one on constantly so that you know every time you plug in your 240 that your battery's been constantly top 